So good morning, everybody. Uh, I think we are going to uh, approach now the second part of this uh, event in which uh, we would like to present uh, uh, the main achievements of our university in the, in the last uh, two years, which are the last, the, the, the project's life, uh, uh, because we started in, in, in 2020. So again, thank you very much to all the rectors and presidents uh, uh, of the European University. Um, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't have all, all the rectors here uh, because of transportation problems, because uh, uh, of um, uh, illness in, in, our, in some other cases. And but we really appreciate the presence of the rectors and presidents uh, in this event. And uh, particularly today, uh, we really appreciate the presence of the rector, the president of the Université Côte d'Azur, Janik, because today is his birthday. So, <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, we will not sing, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's special. Okay, so. I will try to give, uh, the, I mean, the presentation of Uliseos in a nutshell, but not only uh, in terms of the objectives and so on. Every uh, many of the people uh, that are here today know very much uh, what we want to do, uh, but also reflect the main achievement. How are we now uh, going? In, uh, in our projects. So you know that Ulysseus is always about the trip. Uh, we wanted to have a name uh, that was combining uh, Ulysses and EU, and from that Ulysseus came uh, with the long-term vision of uh, uh, 10 years uh, for reaching our objectives, like uh, Ulysses took from uh, Troja uh, to Ithaca. Okay, so our motto is to, to become this excellency recognized uh, very much persons-centered, uh, entrepreneurial, uh, internationally attractive, looking to the, to the future, always looking uh, to the future. And for that, um, we constructed a plan uh, which uh, was uh, divided into different steps. First, the preparation. Now we are in step one, which is uh, the, the, the pilot programs, uh, the, uh, the building up our common uh, structures and governance, etc. And this is Ulysseus' life. And now we are also approaching uh, step two, which is uh, the new proposal. And for that, we are very pleased to join two new members, the University of Munster and the University of Montenegro. But the, 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 the the trip, or at least this part of the, the trip, finishes, finishes in 2030, uh, which the revisiting, again, of Ulysseus and we, what we want to do. So it's a continual um, monitoring and progressing within the Alliance. Today, uh, in this moment, we are six partners in Ulysseus uh, Live. Uh, the three comprehensive universities, uh, the University of Genoa, the, the University of Côte d'Azur, and the University of Seville. One technical university, the Technical University of Kochice in Slovakia, and two universities of applied sciences, uh, the Havagelia University of Applied Sciences and the uh, Management Center um, in, in Innsbruck. And we wanted to do it uh, not because um, the call uh, actually established that uh, we, we, we will have to cover all kinds of higher education institutions, but because we really believe it, that uh, we could learn from each other. Because uh, we have uh, uh, universities uh, which are uh, very old in, in time, uh, comprehensive research intensive on the one hand, but we also had young universities, very entrepreneurial, with a lot of innovation in pedagogy, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this diversity, which is geographical, but not only geographical, uh, we, we've, we belong to regions in which very, very uh, different uh, economic indicators and innovation uh, innovator, uh, in indicator. So uh, it's, it's a way of complementing each other and helping each other to, to, um, to reduce these gaps that we have uh, within, within Europe. So we are multicultural and uh, plurilingual. We are diverse, but we are complementary in Ulysseus. And uh, since we were asked by a model, uh, uh, these are our principles. Uh, and uh, this figure represents very much what Ulysseus is, this open arm 
uh, figure. Uh, we are uh, based uh, on uh, the model of the innovation ecosystem in which uh, we will work with our uh, stakeholders, uh, the governments, the companies, uh, uh, the society, uh, together with the environment. So we are talking now about the quintuple helix. And uh, within the innovation ecosystem, innovation hubs are uh, the, the funnels, the, 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 the um, centers of gravity of uh, the main activities that we are doing in Liceus joint education, joint research and uh, innovation, and interlinked. We, we, we live really in education-driven uh, research and innovation, innovation, research and innovation-driven uh, education, because we want to contribute to the uh, transformation of our regions and our cities uh, based in innovation, and obviously uh, for preparing the, the citizens for the, for the future. So for that, we have built up a very participative uh, and democratic uh, structure, and we've also um, put in place some bodies and some committees for the monitoring, like uh, the radar. The radar observatory is not only for internal uh, assessment of what we are doing in Oliseus, it's also for uh, analyzing the trends and having a foresight capacity that will help us in the decision that we are doing. With the four openness that the rector of the University of Seville uh, said before, uh, in education, in science, in dissemination to other partners, the example is what we have today, that uh, we are enlarging the family for the next proposal and to the world with our international cooperation strategy. So uh, these are our challenges, these are our goals. Uh, the first one is to modernize our, our universities for allowing more co-creation, more, more innovation. The second one is to contribute to the regional transformation, and not only at, at the, the city level, but also at the uh, region, uh, regional level. The three is to reduce the competence gap. The four is uh, the social responsibility and the European values within Ulysseus. And, and the fifth is, is, is um, around the international outlook to promote mobility uh, to be uh, an open to the world uh, university. So for the, for the first one, what we are doing is to uh, create a joint structure, which is called our innovation ecosystem on the one hand, and then we have also the, the, the community, okay? So the community is representing the helix, and then uh, we have the campus, uh, in which we have a number of elements that I will tell you a bit later on, okay? So the, in the model, uh, we have uh, the, in red, in the uh, outer red circle, is the, the, the joint structures that we have, like uh, uh, we are building up an ecosystem which is both digital and physical. So for the digital part, we are uh, de developing the digital platform of Ulysseus, uh, and then we have uh, the governance and the management uh, structures, and we have the uh, innovation hubs as very important element of our campus. Then we have the community in, in light degree, the partners, the regional uh, and the local government, the citizens, and the industry. And uh, uh, going uh, uh, to the inner part, we have the, uh, the activities interlinked, research, knowledge transfer, and, in, in, and education, uh, the, the, um, the competencies, uh, the social responsibility, and the mobility and international outlook focused on a number of priorities. So, so we decided to, to be focused uh, in order to uh, contribute more to the regional development. So what we did is in one analysis in which uh, 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 we uh, evaluate our strengths in, in, in terms of uh, education, research, uh, uh, stakeholders, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and uh, we align that with the uh, uh, smart specialization strategies of our regions and the local priorities of our cities. And from that, uh, f uh, six main uh, uh, topics arose which are aging and well-being, energy transport, uh, smart cities, uh, tourism, arts and heritage, digitalization, artificial intelligence, food, biotech and circular economy. Every topic is approached in a, in a different innovation hub. Every university is hosting uh, an innovation hub. And uh, as part of the community, it's very important to, 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 to say that we are not allowed, uh, alone in this, in this journey. We are surrounded 
by a number of associated partners, uh, as I said, the governments, the city hall, halls, the associations of students, of uh, citizens, uh, the, the business confederations, etc., and a number of companies specific uh, to our innovation hub. So far, we have 114 associated partners contributing to Uliseus. And this is the structure of the campus with the innovation hubs that I have already uh, mentioned. The central management office is spread. So we have a, a general coordination unit at the University of Seville and the dissemination unit also at the University of Seville. The, then the international center with a mobility office and the international projects office in Innsbruck. And the, the digitalization unit with the digital platform at, at NIS. Okay, and, and then uh, the innovation hubs in which we are developing the uh, joint structures for research and, um, and, and for innovation, like the incubators, uh, living labs, uh, open classes uh, for dissemination, etc. Okay, so uh, the digital platform has got some elements already uh, working, like, uh, for instance, the, the, the cooperative uh, part of the, of, uh, of the platform by, uh, by using a team and SharePoint, etc. We have already in place the Moodle of Ulysseus, in which we are um, um, offering the, uh, our online online courses. Uh, the, the web pages are also in the platform. We, we are now uh, finishing the new one which will be released uh, very soon. And also we have uh, applications for uh, collaboration within Ulysseus, not only within the partners, but also with companies, etc. And this is a match for cooperation app uh, to be, uh, you can have it in your mobile, uh, on your mobile phone. And, and then we have a number of elements that are still under development, like the, the pl platform for the video and uh, conferences and uh, the open source part of the digital platform uh, with the repository, etc., etc. So uh, it's, it's that, uh, this is a joint structure. I, have, I wanted to remark it because it's, it's something which is being developed from, from zero, from scratch, uh, into the service of the University of Dakota Sur and it's a, it's a physical uh, resource for every, everybody. Well, these are the innovation hubs with all the elements as I have already um, explained and with a bit more or more detail on the on the scope, but uh, I, I think I will skip. Okay, this is our governance and management structure. So we have three levels for that. The, at the strategic level, we have the governing council uh, with rectors, vice rectors, and representatives of academic, non-academic staff, and students and associated partners. Uh, the general committee for the day to day, uh, let's say, governance of the project. Two advisory boards, the International Advisory Board and RADAR, the, the observatory. And, and then we have uh, uh, at the operative level the management structure with the uh, work packages, coordinations, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It is important to, to remark that at every level we have associated partners and we also have students. So associated partners and students have been involved uh, even in the proposal preparation stage they are involved in the in the in the management and the governance of uh, Ulysseus uh, they are involved in the uh, activities uh, concerning research innovation etc etc you see there in this picture some uh, events uh, with the students, like uh, where they were participating in the uh, in the students' assembly in Stras Strasbourg last year, and now they they, they are prepared preparing for for contributing to to, to, ne to the next one. And you see in, at, at the bottom, you see a co-creation section with students for the first joint master that uh, uh, was prepared for the alliance. So the the student really uh, uh, told us what they were expecting. Uh, from the joint masters that we um, we have to uh, accredit. Okay, so again, this is uh, what, how, I mean, we have a lot of communication uh, with them. The key goal, the, the second challenge is to contribute to the development of the cities and the regions. And for that, we, we are developing a number of joint European degrees and uh, research and innovation projects. So this is uh, concerning the academic offer of Ulysseus. Uh, this is uh, the, the whole picture. We, want, we, we wanted to, to have it as, uh, as an integrated view uh, with the uh, official and non-official, uh, uh, let's say, offer and activities. Uh, and it's very important that uh, um, 
in the in the first part of Oliseo, we've been planning quite a lot. So we've been doing a lot of um, agreements uh, in order to know each other first and to facilitate everything. So we have a roadmap for the uh, educational activities. We have a framework agreement for academic recognition, which is very important. So we, we had to know uh, first uh, the, the, the rules uh, within our uh, universities and countries. And from that, we developed the, the framework ag agreement, which is going to facilitate a lot of the academic recognition in, in our universities. And the, we did the same for the joint degrees. Uh, we are very ambitious. I, I don't know if we are the most ambitious European university in terms of joint degrees, but we have committed to accredit 12. One joint master and one uh, PhD program uh, per innovation hub. And this is quite a lot, but we are working hard uh, to uh, to achieve it. So so for that again we have the background documents on the one hand, and we have uh, uh, developed uh, a, a, a number of working groups for uh, for every uh, every master and PhD. Uh, so this is the pipeline. Uh, I will not go into details because everybody uh, who wants the, con the, the, the presentation uh, will, will have it. But just to, to let you know that we have already submitted for accreditation the first uh, pilot, the, ma the master, the joint, with all the elements that we, we believe an European uh, joint master should have on energy transport mobility for the smart cities of the future. This is uh, within the context of the innovation hub coordinated by the University of Seville. Uh, has been submitted for accreditation to um, the, the Andalusian um, agency, uh, which is registered in, in Eckhart. So we are, uh, we are using the European approach. The six partners universities are participating uh, due to regulatory constraints, not all the six partners are um, awarding the, the, the joint degree, only, only three, but um, uh, we, we are now proceeding to uh, parallel accreditations in, our, in, the, in the other countries in order to have at the end a joint diploma, which is uh, the, the, very, the very objective of this. Uh, in parallel, uh, we are applying for Erasmus Mundus joint master degree uh, design measures, uh, some of them are granted, and uh, we will also apply for uh, the Erasmus Mundus joint master degree in order to get the label, but not only the label, also and the grants for, for the students. So uh, it, by using the same approach, we are now preparing the second and the third master's um, degrees on artificial intelligence. And this is coordinated by Hagahelia by using the same, uh, the European approach, and uh, on food, biotech, and circular economy. And this is coordinated by, by MCI. Uh, and again, we are preparing the joint doctoral programs and applying the, the, for doctoral networks. So uh, it is true that it's very ambitious, but uh, uh, on the one hand, we wanted to do it like this. And I think that now we have the context, uh, we have the people, we have the knowledge, and we have the strength for achieving it. OK. We've also worked on the double degrees. So for that, uh, we've, um, uh, the rectors have signed uh, um, a template, an agreement, uh, followed by a specific agreement for the early sales double degrees at the bachelor, master, and uh, PhD level. So we have already two uh, double degrees uh, that were signed by, by the University of Seville and, and MCI. Uh, and uh, this is the pipeline for the double degrees. So, so uh, we, as we have the template, it is, is, uh, now it's very easy to go only and fill the specific uh, information, like the languages requirements, like uh, it, the academic itinerary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So hopefully soon we will have a lot of double degrees also in, in place. And at the same time, we are uh, also working on the non-official um, uh, offer of Liceus with an, a number of uh, short courses, and some of them in, in the MOOC uh, format. We are now working also on micro-credentials, but uh, uh, not yet uh, the, uh, finished uh, because um, we have to know the rules and these are not clear yet, but we have an, a number of uh, joint um, um, short courses in, in place uh, regarding um, entrepreneurship, uh, uh, sustainable development, uh, etc. and everything is in, in the web page. 
At the same time, uh, because uh, because we are very ambitious, we need uh, five million euros is quite a lot of money, but we need more, and we are applying for more projects. So we have a fleet of little ships, little projects surrounding Ulysseus and supporting Ulysseus, like Compass. Compass again, using the the, the sea uh, terminology, is is a Horizon 2020 project. Uh, uh, is, 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 is coordination and support action and is for um, developing the research and innovation agenda of Ulysseus. So uh, it is very much linked to, to Ulysseus. E every time we are working uh, and we are talking about research in Ulysseus, we are using, I mean, we are also uh, considering Compass. Then some uh, Europe, uh, Erasmus Mundus join master degrees, uh, design measures, uh, projects for competencies and projects for mobility etc. Uh, okay, so uh, in, in red, what has been achieved uh, in 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 uh, Dalak, the pipeline of the projects that are uh, prepared or under preparation or submitted. Okay, so this is just to let you know that uh, this information is coming from the office, from the International Projects Office, and uh, this is what we have so far, which is um, I would say is much. Uh, within Compass, we are trying to get the researchers together. So we are organizing a lot of uh, events, uh, like the Researchers Week, etc., uh, etc. Et so we are build, building up now uh, the collaborations. We had some collaborations, but we are now uh, building up more collaborations within the Alliance. Okay? So let's go to the third. Um, Key goal, which is to reduce the competence gap, and in the, this uh, this part is uh, uh, coordinated by by Hagagelia. So uh, we are offering open access languages courses through the digital platform. You you see there uh, uh, the courses that are already uh, running and. Uh, uh, also, it is very important that uh, we've uh, recovered uh, from the pandemic and now we've started to do a lot of uh, on-site events. And this is uh, an entrepreneurship camp organized by Hagagelia in Helsinki uh, this summer with the at uh, uh, attendance of 50 students that were having a great uh, time on the one hand, but also they were trained uh, about uh, how to contribute to a, a, a challenge uh, through uh, entrepreneurship, and these are our students in, in uh, Helsinki. Uh, the fourth key goal is to enhance the knowledge and practice of the European value. So uh, here we have uh, a number of activities uh, related to, 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 to promote uh, the, the, the European citizenships and, and to get the, the, engagement, the en engagement of the citizens on the one hand and also all the supportive programs for special needs, gender equality, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So some examples of what, what we are doing, like seminars, like uh, the uh, webinars, uh, etc., and uh, also in the uh, in the, at the deliverable phase uh, yet, and, but not uh, implemented. Uh, we have all the, the programs for the citizens' engagement and gender equality. Uh, at, at, at trying to, to get also the elder list uh, for internationalization and uh, open classes, uh, etc. And finally, uh, the uh, international outlook in Ulysseus uh, with a number of programs, not only mobility, uh, green mobility, which is very much uh, uh, in within our minds, uh, mobility also for high schools and the international cooperation uh, strategy of Ulysseus, uh, welcoming guides and the, the, the talent attraction uh, programs and international promotion. So we have, sorry. Okay, so, so we've set up uh, mobility programs for, for students, for, te for, for teachers, uh, for non-academic staff, and not only mobility, it's also some summer schools for, uh, for, for non-academic staff as, as the one that, that was organized in Innsbruck this summer uh, for professional staff in Ulysseus. And uh, as, as I said, uh, green mobility is very important for us. So we have uh, the green mobility guide. We also have the uh, Ulysseus welcoming guide, etc. Uh, this week in uh, Genoa, uh, it is happening this uh, BIP, the, this blended intensive program for uh, Ulysseus students around uh, entrepreneurship and innovative business models for the cultural and creative industry. And uh, many Ulysseus students are now in Genoa uh, uh, 
uh, doing this activity. And finally, and these are the targets for our international cooperation program uh, because we want to be uh, beyond uh, Uliseos. So we have selected a number of regions, seven so far, and uh, uh, we, 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 we have to develop this, uh, this pro program. But just yesterday, uh, the, the rectors uh, agreed uh, on the, the, the place for the f first branch that will be set uh, outside Europe in New Liceus, uh, and that will be in Vietnam. It will be in Asia, in Vietnam, uh, at one university in Vietnam. Okay. So this is uh, the end of the presentation uh, from the beginning and where we are now. And uh, looking at the past, I, I, I really feel pleased and I thank everybody for uh, the contribution to this uh, wonderful journey. And look at, looking at the future, I, I, I am more pleased again because uh, we are now having two more partners for the next phase and uh, hopefully everything will be uh, all right uh, in the second phase too. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know if you have any question. I mean, would, I don't think it's organized, but I mean, if any, everybody wants to th ask something or make a contribution, you are very welcome. If not, we move to the next uh, uh, session, which is a round table, which is going to be moderated by Fulvio from the University of Genoa. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much for being here. There is, I think, okay, so we keep our pace, so there is no break and uh, no rest. Uh, so first of all, welcome to everybody um, for being here. We have today uh, an exciting round, we have two round tables. I'm actually moderating the first one. So uh, it is a very interesting topic uh, centered around innovation. So in particular, the round table, it's uh, entitled European Strategy for Universities and the um, European uh, and, 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 and the new uh, 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 innovation and the new European innovation agenda. So it is important to relate these initiatives to actually the uh, European Universities Initiative. So as we all know, um, innovation is not the end part of our work as educators and scientists and cultural uh, uh, professors, but it is something that should be part of all the aspects of what we do, so internally and externally. So actually we uh, asked a number of uh, uh, colleagues that uh, I, I, will, I will present in a minute about, I mean, to share their thoughts um, about what does it mean innovation, what does it mean innovation with respect to European alliances, new universities, new models, as well as also to how innovation is connected to the new uh, innovation strategies at the EU level. So I'm very happy to, 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 mod to moderate this session. I mean, very last minute, but you know, you have to be always ready to do, to do things. So, and uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy to say that we uh, discuss about this topic together with Joanna de Vendeler, uh, who is Policy Officer for Higher Education, Directory General for Education, Youth, Sport and Culture. And then with Stefan Bergmans here, uh, EU, um, EUA Director for Research and Innovation. Then Yannick Brisvalter here, um, uh, Director of the University of Côte d'Azur. You already know him, it's been already there. And eventually Siegfried Walsh, Professor and Head of the Department for Not-Profit social and health management at MCI and, and entrepreneurship school. <laughs> so uh, just to I will maybe start, maybe with your, maybe Joanna, 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 if you want, uh, it would be nice for you to maybe see what are your thoughts about what you have seen and this kind of activities that we are discussing here. And I will just see you. All right. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Is this on? Okay, perfect. Uh, it's, I think, still okay to say good morning, it's 11. Uh, good morning also to, to the colleagues uh, watching us uh, online. I am very happy to be here today, so uh, thank you very much for, uh, for inviting me. Um, 
I, I have to start by saying how impressed I am by all the work that has been done in Eras in uh, Ulysseus and how important this is for for the European Commission and uh, for uh, for Erasmus and for the European Universities uh, Initiative. I, I, I could pick up and we could speak probably an entire day. I want to know everything about the, the, the joint programs, two per hub, uh, about the citizens' engagement and all the other wonderful things that, uh, that you are doing there, the, the research part as well. Very, very interesting. So um, really, mm -hmm. congratulations. So um, I, uh, I strongly encourage you to uh, participate to the next uh, phase. <laughs> you are probably already in the uh, preparation of the, of the proposal uh, together, as I heard, <laughs> with, with your students also, with the staff, with the members of uh, all, all the, the higher education institutions involved. So um, uh, a lot of luck to you <laughs> into that uh, selection, uh, because this is, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, an excellent, excellent uh, alliance that we would like very much to, uh, to see continued. But of course, as you know, it's a competitive uh, process, so uh, you, you will know more uh, soon. But until then, uh, <laughs> courage <laughs> for the preparation uh, phase, which we know it is very, very uh, challenging. And uh, together with our colleagues in the executive agency, uh, 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 we are standing to, uh, uh, let's say, ready to, to support you in any way. So th that was my, my first uh, thought. Uh, second thought is um, um, to uh, tell you a little bit um, about the theme of the discussion today. So um, everything about the European strategy for universities um, and about uh, what we are trying to do to connect more actually uh, education and innovation and why do we think this is uh, important and it is a priority for uh, our, our commissioner, uh, Maria Gabriel. <coughs> so um, as it was announced, uh, I'm trying to keep the timing, I will be very brief. So um, the, the European strategy for universities as well as the new uh, uh, European innovation agenda are, are basically two strategic visions. And probably many of you have been involved at one point or another into their development uh, because they are part of a, of a consultation process. Um, and actually what they created is, um, uh, is, is really a momentum. And the objective is really to support the entire higher education uh, sector to um, uh, empower them to become stronger and then to make uh, uh, you know uh, help our societies uh, really to uh, to progress across all their missions so all the missions are um, uh, very very important are, are very uh, connected so for us well, when we speak about innovation it's not innovation in isolation is connected with all the other missions of the uh, of the university so um, what is innovation to us? Well, it's innovation in higher education and innovation for higher education. So um, uh, it's, it's really to be understood in, in a broad sense, so not just technological innovation. It's, uh, it's also uh, social innovation, but it could also very well be innovation in the way higher education is implemented. <coughs> and I've, I've seen a lot of examples already, sorry. Merci. <laughs> I've seen uh, a lot of great examples already in, in your alliance when I, I, I look about, I, I think about the hubs. These are excellent examples, but you also have living labs. So the way uh, to, to communicate with, with, with the society and involve them in, in, in this process. Um, these are all innovations in, in, in pedagogies that are, um, uh, let's say, <coughs> making your institutions building capacity and become uh, more involved with their local communities, with their ecosystems, and uh, uh, and and thereby, uh, you know, uh, striving uh, better uh, in uh, uh, in the, in the innovation uh, ecosystem. Innovation for ecosystem. It means for innovation. Sorry, it means that what we're trying to do is to boost the innovation potential. Uh, of the higher education institutions through these policy documents and through this um, financial support that we are offering through diverse instruments. Uh, Erasmus Plus is, is obviously one of them. So the idea is really to empower students, to give them 
the skills that they need and of course in cooperation with the ecosystem and reflecting uh, their needs. So um, <coughs> this is um, <coughs> also a key element to put universities really at the center of their ecosystem and to support them in connecting uh, communities and connecting regions. This is also an idea that uh, comes in the European strategy for universities very strongly and also in the new uh, European innovation uh, agenda. So, um, <coughs> do I have still a couple of minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Full five minutes. A full five minutes. Oh, yeah, that's are, wonderful. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Um, yeah, so we, we, we have this. I, I will not go into the details of presenting these uh, strategic documents because you probably had, have had the opportunities uh, uh, to, to hear a lot of, of them. Uh, uh, what I'm, I'm trying to, um, to explain is basically we, we have this momentum, the strategic momentum, the strategic vision. And now we are looking into how we can support the higher education institutions to, um, uh, let's say, step into uh, the implementation phase. And this implementation uh, is actually, um, let's say, it has to be connected with their own vision, with their own goals with their own strategic objectives for, for the future. So it's a, a variable geometries, if you wish. It it's depends on your needs, it depends on your strengths. Um, so what, what we are doing at commission level, if we have policy, we have uh, programs that you know well. Uh, and then our commissioner, Gabriel, because she's very attached to the idea of connecting the two communities, so the, the innovation and the education community, um, she actually organized a summit, a European Education and Innovation Summit in June this year. And actually we have seen that there was a sort of a thirst in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the two communities to, to cooperate <laughs> more closely together. And uh, this is because they have, in my opinion, uh, there is a lot of common ground for, for them to work together. So <coughs> you have um, uh, the, the same objectives of contributing to the societal challenges, the same objective of, uh, of uh, training uh, talents of the future, of uh, offering future skills, um, of uh, working towards uh, more, um, uh, let's say, connected uh, communities, more sustainable communities. So there is a lot of common ground for, for, for them to, uh, uh, to, to, to discuss uh, and to uh, let's say, have opportunities uh, to meet more. And uh, this event is going to happen every year, but of course, in between the years, <laughs> there is a lot of, uh, a lot of things that, uh, that, that have to happen and have to, to, to progress. Uh, one of them, so with the occasion of the summit uh, last June, our commissioner established this uh, European network of innovative higher education institutions. Uh, most of the universities have been appointed by their uh, by their um, uh, national ministries. But of course, it's, it's not a network uh, that works in isolation. It's a network that is uh, supposed to, to diffuse knowledge, to exchange with the broader uh, higher education uh, community. Uh, so their role is really to have a strategic reflection and offer some best uh, practice examples. And this is exactly what they have done with the report. So they have produced a report um, the report has been presented quite recently, actually a few days ago at the Education Summit here in Brussels. <coughs> Apologies. And um, actually, if I'm looking at, at several of their actions, I, I have it actually open here on my phone, so I'm not checking text messages. <laughs> so um, <laughs> you have... Um, um, uh, recommendations in this report that are looking uh, uh, on the creation of living labs. This is an action that appears uh, clearly in, in Uliseus. It is an action that it's also very much supported uh, by the European strategy for universities. So you, you can see actually how this is um, connecting the dots uh, in, in a way. Yeah? Then there is a recommendation on the regional deep tech innovation values. 
um, this is very much in line with the work that you are already doing, actually, of uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, connecting with your ecosystems and then helping universities really to become um, uh, centers of, of, of knowledge and to have knowledge transfer within their regions and to become poles of attracting you know, different communities, attracting talent, and then the ambition is also to have to connect these ecosystems where the university is at the center across uh, across Europe. So I, I could go on and on with this <coughs> with this report. And so um, um, what I wanted to say is that uh, really um, uh, it is very important. I mean, European universities are really at the heart of this process. Why? Uh, first, because they are one uh, absolutely fantastic initiative, one of the most ambitious that we have. Uh, that we support under Erasmus Plus in, in higher education. Uh, and then also because it is, for, for many, many reasons, it has been uh, it stated, presented as, um, <coughs> as, um, as a flagship initiative mm. in the European strategy for universities. So you see everything is, is connected, but of course, um, let's say, um, it's a very ambi ambitious an initiative, as you all know. It requires a lot of investment. It requires a lot of efforts. It requires, uh, it's not a simple project. Uh, it has uh, to involve all the governance of the institutions, all the faculties, all the students. So it's, it's really an in-depth uh, cooperation uh, model. And this is the reason why it has such a great potential to achieve, uh, let's say, uh, to contribute to achieving again, in link, in, in link with uh, its own strategy, with its own vision, many of the uh, objectives that are already uh, important, mentioned as important at, at, uh, at policy level. <coughs> and of course, last but not least, uh, and then I will stop, I will stop no, here. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I wanted to say that I, I uh, very much liked the last uh, part of the presentation when you actually showed the constellation of the projects that Ulysseus is, um, uh, is, is attracting. And um, I want to say that all cooperation models are extraordinarily important. And cooperation is really happening in, the, in, in Europe for a thousand years. They didn't wait for <laughs> the European University alliances. But what, we, what I want to say is that this is all bringing value and building capacity for the universities. And it's really constructing a sort of a European pathway of, of each uh, university. Thank you. So thank you. I mean, thank you very much. And let's thank <laughs> Johanna. Yes. So thank you very much for your I mean, th thoughts. You highlighted uh, a number of different uh, um, uh, points. And all of them are equally important to building real innovation ecosystems. No one should be left out. So uh, Stefan. Uh, your appointment is related to research and innovation, so Absolutely. there should be some uh, obvious maybe link between these two, but uh, let's see if uh, the obvious links are the ones that are most important ones. So please, what thank do you, you think about this topic? So thank you very much, and uh, thank you also to uh, the uh, Ulysses uh, Alliance, actually, for inviting me and, and EUA to speak here today uh, at your event. Uh, congratulations. I don't know, but at least welcome to the two new members also, crossing fingers, so uh, all behind you there. Uh, finally, what I want to do is uh, try to tell you also which perspective I'm, I'm speaking to you from. Uh. So I'm from the European University Association. We represent more than 850 universities in Europe uh, in 48 countries, so this goes beyond uh, the EU. Uh, but uh, we also represent 35 national rectors conferences. So what we do is really uh, represent the university sector and speak uh, in their name, in, in its name. We provide expertise and we do advocacy on higher education, on research, and of course, on innovation. Uh, we've been active uh, on innovation since two th uh, 2014. We have an expert group that's dedicated. Uh, and one of the last things we've, we've done actually in 2021 is a survey of our membership uh, on innovation at universities. And uh, we had 166 universities, going up by the way, uh, 166 universities who answer from 28 different countries. So I'm going to draw on that experience to, uh, to answer uh, questions that were put to me. Um, so really starting, 
uh, with with the, the first question uh, that was put to us, um, I can say that from the survey, the news is good. We saw from our survey that 74% of the respondents actually have a focus strategically at universities on, strat uh, on innovation. So that's very good news. The bad news though is that only 60% say that they have the capacity to do so. So what we can see is there's a gap between the strategic uh, willingness, if you want, of universities to go into innovation and the actual capacity they have to do so. So we do believe uh, at EUA that more collaboration and more partnership, of course, uh, and uni European universities are a good way to do that. Uh, so more of that will be very, uh, very important, actually, in good direction. That's why in the Vision 2030 document we published last year uh, called Universities Without Wall, the vision is actually to have European uh, universities that are very much characterized now and in the future by collaboration. Another important pillar, strategic pillar of EUA is European solidarity. Solidarity within the sector. So this means that uh, in, in our view, it's, it's really about the sharing of best practices and the collaboration within, uh, within our membership. And there the good news is that most of the members of the alliances are also members of EUA. So like today, out of the eight, it's six. So that's where also some of that uh, sharing can take place. So going back to the policy frameworks, those are you know, really important values, I think. So both the European strategy for universities as well as the new uh, uh, European innovation agenda can help uh, with, the, uh, with the difficulties that Europe can have in innovation. And that's both through the, the sharing of the best practice, like we said, and, and the lessons learned, and that's where the EUIs also come from, but it shouldn't be limited to that. I think it's important that the alliances share with all the sector what they're doing, what they're, they're learning and how to do it, but we shouldn't limit it just to the alliances. It should also be the other way around. And I think that many other universities are trying things, being part of partnerships that are not in the alliances. So it needs to go in, in both directions. I think that's very important too. As for the new European innovation agenda, well, we provided our response right away in July after it was published. And uh, while, you know, um, universities in there are not acknowledged enough, let's face it. It was not the case, and we complained about that. Otherwise, I think we think that the, the diagnosis is accurate, but we have a problem with the fact that the uh, prescription of the remedies is way too narrow, actually, very technological. Whereas, you know, innovation is much more than that. So that's one thing we, we were saying. Uh, there's a notion of innovation in there that uh, is more trans transactional, focusing on companies, for example, or on products, rather than transformational, looking at the whole uh, chain of innova innovation. So that's one of the things we said also. There is a mention of the place-based uh, innovation and local e uh, ecosystem. But there again, we, s we feel, and it's in our paper, um, but that there is a misalignment between the, uh, the expectation there. The public sector is very much seen as a provider for the private sector. <coughs> and that, we think, is wrong. Public sector can be an innovator too and can play a m significant role there. So that's what we put forward. And it is linked somewhat also to the vision in the agenda about higher education sector, which is uh, referred to way too, uh, way, way too little and uh, most of the time as a provider, again, for the private sector with key indicators like, you know, number of, uh, of trainees, uh, number of publications, number of patents. It needs to go behind beyond that. And the good news is that the council conclusions that just came out take into account uh, some of those complaints we had about it. So that's very good news. Um, as I said also, I mean, uh, going now into the second question, more around the synergies, um, collaboration partnership is important, of course, for, for universities, uh, and that's very welcome. And in our survey, we were able to show that the partnership is one of the key indicators that universities use to see how innovative they are. So it's uh, about 67% when it comes to green innovation and 54% when it comes to digital innovation. But what we see is that when, when you look at the partnership, the types of partnership universities have, when it comes to green transformation, it's mostly with other universities, with civil, uh, uh, civil service organizations, as well as uh, national authorities. Whereas in the, in the digital, it's mostly with the SMEs. 
So one of the synergies that you could have between the different policies at European level, actually, is to make sure that this goes beyond, so that both for the green and the digital transitions, you have SMEs and universities in all cases. So that's one thing that could be uh, clearly enhanced, actually. And again, as I said, it's not just within the alliances, but also outside. I think there the, the, the sector there needs to, uh, to be able to look at that. But U European universities clearly uh, have, uh, have a role to play uh, in, in determining what works and what, what doesn't work. So lots of lessons to, to, be, to be learned there. And one of the places I think that you showed in your presentation, by the way, that we also highlight in our survey is uh, the, uh, the uh, enabling the collaboration through uh, um, spaces that are co-shared. You gave the example with students. That was excellent, actually. That's something uh, we, we really promote. The other thing is, let's not forget, the r &I dimension of the alliances came late. They're very recent. They're, I would say, underfunded. And we have very li little view on the future of the funding there, too. So let's keep that in mind. So you are focused on innovation. Some others are, too. But let's not overburden the alliances, either. Huh? Let's not force this on all of them, depending on what they do. They are to test different things, and I think that's, uh, that's also very important. But it's interesting, because in the survey, when we ask about the main EU funding source for innovation, Erasmus Plus was mentioned first uh, by 71% of the universities. And that's interesting because it relates also to the fact that for them, innovation is on learning and teaching. So that's a very important element. And there, we really think, and we put that forward, that uh, teaching entrepreneurship is something that's not being done enough right now or not properly enough. And there's much work to be done there. So I think that you're also uh, quite a test bet for, for that. Um, I think that when it comes to the uh, recommendations, the 10 recommendations that just came that you looked up on your phone, let's be very honest. I'll be blunt. We're not happy about how this network was put together. Completely untransparent. And uh, why is there a need for creation yet of another network when organizations like ours, but other ones actually, representing the sector, have already made recommendations? We handed our recommendations that include those 10 to Commissioner Gabriel uh, back in November 2021. Uh, so in this case, we're a bit conscious that there, there might be duplication when actually work you know, could, be, could be done elsewhere. And in terms of the recommendations, they're fine. They're actually well aligned. There are three things that we think were forgotten in there. The first one from our recommendation is that uh, it's forgetting that you need to be able to do innovation well at universities to have efficient institutional governance that's in place. And let's not forget university autonomy. Without that, you cannot do properly innovation. So that's one, Im one important thing. The other one, and you highlighted that again in your presentation, is you need to have more widespread use of citizen science also. So that's very important. And the third one is something close to my heart. We just launched COARA, the Coalition for the Reform of Research Assessment, and that's you need to reform academic careers so that innovation and many other, actually, of the things that academics do is recognized well because that's going to be uh, one of the enablers there. So it's kind of sad that we're stuck to reiterate this after the agenda came out and after those recommendations com come out. I think it would be better if we had uh, had more of a co-creation with our sector, but also you know, broader than our sector. And there I think that there's been a limitation. So we think, and we're very happy <coughs> to see the council conclusion that go much broader. For example, they do conceive a notion of innovation that goes beyond. And I'm very happy that you just mentioned social innovation because that's completely missing, actually, in the agenda, which is much more focused on the tech aspect. Uh, so that's something we, we, we're quite, uh, quite keen on. And we really believe you need to have a more holistic perspective, actually, uh, taking into account other types of activity, like social innovation, for example, when you come up and when you implement policies like that. So I'll stop here. I could say much more about, uh, uh, about the, um, the coalition of the willing, but we can talk about that later. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you. So let's thank the speaker also in this case. And now in this round table, let's enter the Ulysses uh, partnership here. So um, Yannick, um, so we have been here witnessing a number of important points so on different levels, so innovation, social innovations at different levels, 
internal university innovations at different levels. So what are your thoughts for one of the partners of the European, Research, U U European Alliance? Yeah, uh, just I, I have a few slides to answer to okay. your question. I don't know if Melania could uh, <laughs> launch the slide. Uh, just to, to give some example uh, why for us, for the European Alliance uh, like Ulysseus, uh, we think that we are, we are the best, we can create the best condition to be test bed for both policies you talk about, uh, Johanna and Stefan. So maybe um, I will just give you a real example uh, why we, we are uh, able to create this, this condition. Uh, before launching the slides, just uh, as I... S it's right there. It's okay. Oh, okay, you, you, we, are, we have something to... So, as no, 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 it's okay. Uh, as, I, as I said previously this morning, Thank you. Uh, as I said previously this morning, uh, we, uh, universities and rectors, we are really convinced that uh, universities uh, they have to play a key role to address the major social, soci so social, environmental, technological challenges. And we need to address them at the European level, at the interface between uh, competitiveness <coughs> and uh, sovereignty. So it's very important. We have hosted uh, recently the first uh, innovation campus in Nice with Maria Gabriel, and we had the same uh, conversation. And I think we share the same idea that uh, universities have a real role uh, in, in, the, in that topic. So I, have, uh, I will just give you a few examples of what we are doing in, uh, in the Ulysseus. I don't know how it works. Up. Yes. Uh, in the Ulysses, you have seen, we have to create, oh, okay, I can see, you can see. We have to create some, uh, some uh, innovation hubs. And this innovation hub uh, is very close with so what you call in the innovation agenda uh, in, in a space, I think. And uh, in this innovation hub, I will just give you one example from the innovation lab we developed in, uh, in University Côte d'Azur on aging and well-being. Uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, the innovation hub is located in a building belonging to the municipality, very close to the university hospital. And you see you have different actors. You have also, you have users in the innovation hub, users, patients, citizens, all healthcare uh, professionals. You have also academics because we are very close from labs uh, who are located, which, which are located uh, at the hospital. <laughs> and uh, we have also techno suppliers. So the innovation hub is a really an holistic approach of, uh, of uh, aging and, and well-being. And as uh, we can see, we have also living labs uh, working in the innovation hub in order to, to test and to uh, have a lot of uh, data uh, collected. So we have a real connection between our Artificial Intelligence Institute and uh, the innovation hub. So we are really creating, developing an ecosystem, an innovation ecosystem with all our strengths, with all our partners on, uh, on this topic. And on the last slide, just to show you no. Yes. So to, just to show you all the actors uh, who are engaged in this innovation hub, you have healthcare professionals, you have uh, researchers, you have academic staff, you have also uh, uh, specialists in artificial intelligence, in uh, humanities, because aging is a very uh, huge uh, t topics with medical aspect, but also social aspects, psychological aspects, economical aspects. So we have all together in this innovation hub, and we work very closely with all companies and all local authorities, which <coughs> is very important. So that's uh, to give you an idea of the philosophy of how we develop this innovation hub and how we develop this innovation ecosystem that we put after and that we share after with all our partners at uh, the European level. The second example I will give you is that in your strategy, in the European strategy, we have to increase uh, the education program as well as the initial programs and long life programs. And just two examples that we have uh, collectively proposed as a re Erasmus program. The first one, as you can see, is a digital soft skill for citizens of the future. Uh, it is a program which aims to improve uh, transversal skills especially related to uh, new technologies and that we can share and that we can gather among universities in order to create a real dynamic in, in, in this topic. 
and the, this one is uh, is coordinated by Université Côte d'Azur. And the second one is COMEIC, uh, which is coordinated by Université Agalia University, is to co-create an Erasmus Mundus uh, uh, program, uh, which is called COME, in order to uh, create after a joint master in artificial intelligence, which is a very huge uh, challenge for the moment in all domains. So we had this is one example. The second example on your uh, right uh, is to increase the development of platforms in order to create a real uh, virtual Ulysseus campus on all over the, uh, Europe. So we have different uh, actions. So I just show you two actions. The first one is match for cop match for cop is a kind of Twitter for as well for uh, our uh, academic uh, partners, but also for all partners outside of the university and outside of uh, Nice, for example, with, with which we can share all uh, knowledge uh, on one specific topic. So it, it is a, a, a kind of application we have developed. And the second one is uh, the open science uh, uh, policy of uh, the Alliance, with, which is very important in order to share uh, all uh, data, all knowledge, and uh, to have a real uh, open science policy at the at the European level. So that was I want to say, just to give you two examples of how the Ulysses Alliance can help and can be in, in line with your uh, strategies. Thank you, Yannick. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an important point. Also, uh, the the importance that has been highlighted about physical space, especially after the pandemic, now it's becoming, again, very important. So from some time we thought that virtual and just remote things were enough, but now the reason when you work physically together with other people, of course, the, uh, the, the way ideas can increase, it's uh, exp exponential in a sense. So now, we, Siegfried, so, uh, as the last of this uh, first check, uh, you, have, you have also you, uh, you have uh, witnessed many uh, ideas, many connections with what we have been discussing. So, what are your general thoughts, please? Yeah, thank you very yes. much. Um, I'm uh, representing the MCI, the Entrepreneurial School in, in Innsbruck, and MCI has been founded uh, relatively recently. Yeah, if you talk about universities, 25 years ago, by the University of Innsbruck by the city of Innsbruck, by the state of the Tyrol, by uh, the Federation of Austrian Industries, by the Chamber of Commerce, by the Chamber of Labor. So what you see is we, we more or less incorporate our ecosystem. So MCI is placed, and that was uh, a kind of a prerequisite for a new investment in the University of Innsbruck at that time. We, we, we you get that investment when you establish something like MCI. And we invited, for, for today, we invited the uh, head, uh, designated head of our uh, Federation of Austrian Industry uh, section, uh, Tyrol, state of the Tyrol, to, to describe this ecosystem. And I will try to do that on behalf of him a little bit, so to, to make you understand how, how this ecosystem is connected and, and why Ulysseus counts and is relevant for this ecosystem. So, um, as the, the, the association represents the, 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 the big companies in, in the region, it is important to underline that industry is about one uh, third of our uh, GDP. But there is another third which is um, made by our tourism business. Uh, you know, Tyrol in between Germany and Italy, in the Alps, very nice landscape, very well connected with Germany, Italy, and, and the rest of Europe, hosts about 43 million overnight per year, which is huge. Um, and 90% and, uh, of this money, of this GDP, is made by family businesses. So it's no big corporations. So therefore, when we talk about our innovation hub, and Janik has uh, illustrated very nicely how these innovation hubs are built and constructed in Ulysseus, when we talk about our innovation hub, we have to make sure that this innovation hub is very well connected to this ecosystem. And, and Michael Meyerhofer, as the head of the, the Federation of Industries, said, um, we have to put that into account. When we talk about the Innovation Hub at MCI and all the synergies for the region, uh, we have to make sure that this Innovation Hub um, serves these different industries. So therefore, our Innovation Hub will evolve further into the direction that covers all these subjects in the field of sustainable entrepreneurship and tourism, 
life sciences and engineering. So we will cover these topics in the future. And if you, if you, uh, many of you might know uh, Tirol, uh, in Tirol about more than 3%, exactly 3.14% of the GDP go into research. Um, so we are one of these uh, very innovative regions in, in, in Europe and we have to make sure that these innovations and innovation activities are well connected with Ulysseus. Why? So, of course, you could say there has always been close cooperation with universities in the region and in the neighboring regions. Yes, but we, we learn that, um, and I think that's one of the priorities in the innovation agenda, this building, building a talent pool, building a talent pool with uh, European talent and non-European talent, talent. That's not something that we can do on our own. So in order to cover all the fields which are relevant for our region, we would be too small with 800,000 inhabitants to do that on our own. So to be the test bed in entrepreneurship for all these specific fields, we need to attract the talent. And in order to, to do that, in order to prepare for, for scale up startups in innovation, combining social innovation and technologi technological innovation, we have to, to work closely together and to make sure that this deep tech talent is acquired and, 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 and retained together. And as I mentioned earlier this morning, yeah, there is a, a young researcher who did exactly that in Innsbruck. Um, she, as a health economist, approached a sociologist and they made one of these health apps um, accessible for vulnerable populations. So they made sure that what healthy people anyhow wear is al also used for, for more vulnerable people. And they were awarded and the entrepreneur was awarded as the innovator of the year in the field for Austria. And now our postdoc um, <coughs> goes to the University of Nice into the innovation hub on, on aging and well-being and connects with the teams there. And I think this is exactly what we need to, to create these large-scale projects and, and hopefully soon uh, startups. So I, I, I strongly believe that the European University Alliances Initiative makes a difference here. But I think I would also like to, to underline what Stefan said earlier. It's not only about the alliances and these 500 universities in the alliances. We as an alliance have also responsibilities to connect with the universities in the wider networks around us. And we all have our existing networks. And now we have to make sure that we connect them well with our association, uh, with our innovation hubs via the role as associa uh, associated partners. So we have yesterday decided that all these innovation hubs will build a circle of associated university partners to make sure that we also str strongly connect with the wider landscape. So we will make sure that the innovation agenda is pushed forward and that we will also connect with more universities to make this as broad and effective as possible. Thank you, thank you. Let's thank the speaker again. Okay, so this was the this first round. So in principle, now it would be nice to have maybe questions or comments from the audience. I think that uh, we have a, a lot of points that have been discussed. Myself, I have a lot of questions, but I would like you to, <laughs> to ask questions. So uh, are there any comments, questions from the audience? Should I pick up? No, <laughs> <laughs> please, please. Yes, thank you very much for very interesting inputs. Maybe just a short comment, which I liked very much. I think it was Stefan who said it, is that we should also consider teaching and learning as innovation. I think that was very nicely put. So thank you for that. And if I may. There is already a lot of innovation going on, both in the alliances, but also other universities. Huh? So I think that's, uh, that's not to, uh, to undermine the fact that it's not taking place. But I think much more could be done. And one of the aspects we think uh, at EUA from our survey that could be enhanced is really this notion of entrepreneurship. For the moment, what we see is that it's mostly extracurricular. It's not really embedded in the curriculum. And so it's also conveying a notion of startups, of products, whereas entrepreneurship goes beyond that.
And I think that we could embed it in the curriculum, even for social sciences, for example. Uh, you know, for, for I I students right now think this is not important for their future. It needs to be for them something that they understand that whatever I study and whatever I want to do in the future, entrepreneurship will actually be a skill that I can use also. So that's one of the, 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 the lessons we learned from the survey. I can attest to this because I, I come from a very traditional university, University of Münster, who up until three or four years ago sort of never really put a focus on entrepreneurship. At that point, our um, state government launched a project for universities with these so-called excellent startup centers. And we focused very much in that, not to go this traditional route of um, doing technology transfer or focusing on technology transfer, but really to focus on education. So we created four chairs in on focusing on entrepreneurship. And this has been extremely well received as part of the cu curriculum in the general studies section for all p students. So it's a central part, it's a centerpiece now, and it's no longer um, an option to study this. You, you can really easily embed it into your uh, regular study course. And this has created a gigantic momentum, uh, not only within the university, but also with the interlinking institutions uh, at the regional level, to an extent that we are facing a, ch a real challenge, namely we have no room for the startups and for the scale-ups. So th this is a real challenge in that region now. And uh, I'll be quiet after promise, but I think it also illustrates one of the strengths of universities that sometimes the commission forgets, because you were talking, I mean, there's two DGs, huh? There's one for education, there's one for research innovation, and within research innovation, you've got an agenda for innovation, and you've got uh, era for, for, for research. We do everything. We have research, we have innovation, we have the education part, and we put them together, and we connect also with the ecosystem around, with all the other actors. So one of the things we're going to be focusing on for the next four years, because we're, we'll be publishing soon uh, the EUA innovation agenda, is one of the three pillars is going to be focusing on this honest broker role also, that we can play in, you know, because you said it was the local government, it was the federal government, whatever, that came, but you know how to implement this. So I, I, I really love this example, and I'm going to use it again if you don't mind. Just to say, we do not forget we have one commissioner who is very heavily committed to to connect uh, the two worlds, and we we are, um, let's say, aiming to to support um, uh, universities across all their missions. And the European strategy for universities is is all about this: is about inclusion and excellence. It's about uh, supporting across all the four missions and about uh, putting students at, at the center. I, I want to, to jump in just for a second uh, about the, the teaching. I, I fully agree that this is um, a key element. And, and for us, um, uh, let's say um, having um, uh, the, the, the teaching uh, recognized at the same level as the research activity, so this parity of esteem, is actually um, a, a very, very important uh, element. And for the entrepreneurship part, the, the part that you uh, <coughs> were mentioning, we see a lot of added value actually in this cooperation that uh, Ulysseus and other uh, alliances and other cooperation models and other universities are implementing cooperation with their ecosystems because actually uh, it's, it's like a two-way street. So you, you, you have um, your students exposed more to uh, the, the um, entrepreneurship, and in the same time, you can attract uh, the entrepreneurs, the private sector innovators, to actually co-create, co-design, to participate at least with some input to these new curricula that, that you need, where you need to implement uh, entrepreneurship. So for, for, for us, this, this uh, goes both ways, and the more universities are cooperating with their ecosystem, the more this has to be, um, uh, this could be uh, enhanced. <coughs> and of course, we, we are uh, very much supporting this through, through, uh, uh, through the policies, and uh, I, I fully agree it's, it's crucial for the green and, and, and digital uh, transitions. Then I wanted to, to say about the academic careers that we are actually preparing a council recommendation for uh, next year 
uh, on precisely the academic career. So now we are in the phase of consulting uh, uh, universities uh, across the board uh, to um, actually uh, try and have a sort of a coherent uh, framework for, for that and, and, and push forward to the, um, uh, the, the, the discussion. And then maybe we can speak later about the the uh, European uh, University cooperation with the coalition of the willing, uh, with the startups, uh, etc. So, maybe, maybe if there are the questions. Other yeah. questions? <laughs> yes, thank you uh, to all for these uh, interesting speeches. As far as I understood, one part of. Uh, our commissioner Maria Gabriela vision. Um, uh, we may enter it into a, a kind of new industrial revolution based on new general purpose technologies uh, such as uh, artificial intelligence, quantum uh, technologies and, 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 uh, and so on. And uh, uh, do you think that uh, uh, of course uh, this would mean that if the European Union want to play a real role in the next, in this next industrial revolution, which will restructure many different things and sectors. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, 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 organization uh, should we have in in order to 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 get sure that uh, we o not only do uh, some kind of incremental innovation, but maybe also push some radical. Uh, uh, innovation and that uh, we take uh, the whole uh, the whole market uh, on this kind of things. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to start. Huh? Um, it's it's really great because it relates actually to also another question we ask uh, in the survey. Um, we were really it, it's the one question that was not really specific about you know at university what's happening, but more in, into what universities were perceiving about the future. So we asked them how likely they thought that Europe would be actually leading and a champion when it came to the, uh, the, to the twin transition. And overwhelmingly, the answer was yes, we can do it. And not we as universities, Europe can do it. Huh? We're talking about what, 76% uh, uh, that uh, said that the, you know, Europe would be capable of the being disruptive uh, in innovation for both the sustainability and then 68% for the uh, digital leadership. So there's a, there's a clear message. Here. There's a strong belief that it's going to be the case. The how uh, is, is really how to transform this confidence, actually, I into a, a reality. And I think that's where, um, let's face it, the coalition of the willing, for example, is fine, it's good. But you cannot make systemic changes based on voluntary uh, approaches. It has some be some something that has to be again very holistic, and make sure that all actors are are involved. And not just that. I mean, you won't be surprised as EUA that I also argue if you want to do something like this, let's put in the money, because you're going to need to put in the money to be able to uh, to do something like that. So the the sustainable funding for universities is key, and not just towards the innovation, but I think that what's really nice also in the council conclusion is they reiterate also how fundamental basic research is for the possibility of universities, the ecosystems, and Europe to be disruptive. So that's one uh, of the other uh, strong element, and I could go on forever, but uh, I'll stop here. Gentlemen, I, I don't want to monopolize the floor. <laughs> please, please. Okay, so I, I think this is a... a um, uh, let's say a systemic question, <laughs> if I can call it like this, because it's it it has uh, for me two dimensions. W we have a lot of policies, n not in educate, not only in education and and in research and innovation, but uh, the industrial policy, the greening policy, the digital policies, with their own uh, programs that are are supporting uh, uh, innovations and uh, in 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 those areas, and it's uh, this is at European level, and of course uh, it has to be. 
um, of course, supported by the national level, uh, let's say also with, with reforms and uh, also with, with, uh, uh, with, with complementary funding and with creating really, um, um, uh, let's say, conducive conditions for, for that to happen. Now, when we're looking at the, at the European universities and, and the, the universities in, in general and then their cooperation with uh, their ecosystem with the startups, it could be the coalition of the, li uh, of the willing, it could be broader. Um, I think this also contributes uh, to, to generating this conducive uh, environment because there is this permeability between the two, this, this knowledge uh, transfer and uh, uh, things can, uh, can actually um, evolve. And, and this is why um, we are actually working on trying to uh, uh, put together uh, uh, alliances, uh, so the European universities' alliances um, work more <coughs> among themselves because we have seen that this is also a need. We, we have heard from many alliances that, um, and this actually corresponds with one of the ideas in, in the European strategy for universities and in the U new European uh, <coughs> agenda to connect this uh, this. Uh, this uh, big hubs that the universities, alliances, or other cooperation models are, are, are uh, uh, where they are doing excellent uh, jobs in, in, in the regions and the member states. So to connect them together among themselves, because there is a lot of uh, common ground, there is a lot of uh, learning and, and dissemination. This came very strongly from, uh, from, uh, uh, from, from the, 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 the distinguished speakers today. So um, I think that uh, uh, and we want to take it a, a step forward, you know, to, to really uh, uh, start with this cooperation and, and then see uh, uh, how uh, it can be enhanced, how we can continue to, to disseminate on, 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 on the results. Thank you. Just one, one comment <laughs> from, from my health management uh, perspective. If we aim for such moonshots in, in certain fields, uh, we, we also need to understand that, uh, that the whole system we are living in can also be very fragile. And we have experienced that in the pandemic. At the beginning of the pandemic, when suddenly uh, certain states blocked the delivery of uh, supplies to, to neighbor states, all within Europe, the whole uh, talk about and, and, and research about cross-border care and support were more, was more or less erased within a couple of days, not, not even weeks. <laughs> But we learned from it. We learned from it and we started to cooperate and then the, there was the willingness to, to go into a new European health union and to work on that moonshot. And that was possible because of the alliance of policymakers, industries, researchers, universities, and all these big policy fora started to, to really drive the agenda. And I think the, the topics that Stefan mentioned are in the a, in a same situation. Uh, either we, we bundle our forces across the different ecosystems that we are currently building and connecting, uh, or somebody else will do it. You have actually two <laughs> microphones. <laughs> yeah, uh, just, just one as aspect of innovation we didn't talk about. We talk about innovation related to research, to uh, education, but we didn't talk uh, about innovation related to universities' organization. I think that Alliance, uh, European Alliance, is a way to challenge this organization. And maybe we have to think to innovation in our organization in order to cope and to face uh, to this challenge. For example, in Université Côte d'Azur, we, we don't have any more faculties. We just have uh, graduate schools, who are thematic graduate schools, where, where we can have a real link between research innovation and, uh, and uh, training program. So I think we can also uh, have this idea that we need to think about innovation on our organization. It's very important if we want also to progress. That came out really clearly also in the survey. It's not just, uh, fortunately, in the university. Um, the, the structure and the governance uh, need definitely, definitely to be adapted. Uh, and one of the examples is that uh, interdisciplinary institutes are the way forward, m most probably. And, and that's a great example. Uh, I mean, we had, we had other good examples from the survey, but uh, another one I can use again. Thank you. Other Comments, questions from the audience? Okay, if not, in the meantime, maybe I have 
one for <laughs> no okay so one of the things that um i mean let, let's say uh, surprisingly they did they did what, what i mean wasn't uh, at, at the focus at a certain point was that there is historical evidence that uh, innovation and diversity multiculturality immigration are typically connected so there is a positive correlation among that so there's historical evidence in different places so as we as university i mean european university alliance are also aim i guess to be uh, in a sense cultural <laughs> foothold of, of, of certain approaches i mean how do you think that these aspects should be considered by university alliances and if there is the possibility that european university alliances could play a role in general in certain policies or in certain way of promoting this diversity and uh, you know this aspect this aspect this aspect this aspect for all of you <laughs> i don't know <laughs> you need a microphone please <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> it all starts with language we have now English as the lingua franca that connects all of us. I know there's other important languages in the room uh, and I, I also appreciate very much that we invest in multilingualism, that we will allow our students and faculty connect with regional languages or with the languages of the different labor markets and, and member states. But it is, it we have a lingua franca, franca where we can state fr uh, start from. And then we as the universities are the places that have to embrace diversity and to make sure that, that creativity, which is based on, 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 on diverse fuels and diverse backgrounds, is, is uh, nurtured and, 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 and supported. I think that's very clear. Just, just one example we talked about uh, yesterday, uh, about our uh, international network. And we talk about the importance for our alliance uh, to have a real uh, action on the Europe-Africa uh, 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 dialogue. And I think it's very important that the Alliance plays this role and that we have uh, an, an international w network, including Africa, in order, for example, to cope with uh, migration uh, strategies and so on. And can I, I mean, you showed good example earlier in your presentation also, I think, of, of the many ways this, uh, this can be uh, implemented. The alliance as such with so many connections throughout Europe is one way, and then you talked about indeed the interna international uh, you know, uh, uh, outreach there. But I think that I cannot leave today without urging you to, if you haven't considered signing COARA, or signing COARA, because it is perceived very well in the agreement already that elements such as diversity, multilingualism, mm -hmm. for example, are, th are, are to be considered for the reform of research assessment. And it's not because it would be nice, it's as you said, historically we have enough evidence. We don't need to convince people anymore that by being diverse, you're gonna be just better <laughs> at research, at teaching, at innovation. No question about that. So again, I think that if that is important for you as an alliance or as universities, do consider the, uh, the agreement and bring this to the coalition as potentially one of the working groups to work on is this diversity. So there you go. So that's my, my plea for the uh, for Koara. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, I can, I can only agree with, with what has been said. I mean, uh, diversity is, is actually uh, uh, an extraordinary asset for innovation specifically. And uh, it, it is a central dimension of, of the policies that we are implementing. And we are very happy to see that it is also a central dimension in almost all the alliances, including uh, Ulysseus and in many, many of the uh, other types of uh, cooperation projects we are supporting. Um, and it can be, uh, uh, you know, support for mobility. And it can also be attracting um, uh, more diverse uh, populations and students and staff bodies to to uh, to work and to benefit from the experience of of, uh, of of the alliances. And this is all the more important for the for the next phase of of, of the European Universities Alliances, where you have to. 
um, uh, let's say disseminate and, and step out the the uh, step up the the effort um, uh, to extend it to more faculties or uh, uh, maybe faculties won't exist <laughs> in the future you can call them uh, uh, in any other different way so um, but the idea is really to uh, to, to have uh, very strongly this uh, inclusiveness dimension the other thing um, about inclusiveness, uh, we have seen that the European University alliances are um, have become, uh, together with other higher education institutions at national level, very strong ac actors to uh, push also for policy reform. So to have a dialogue with the policymakers and, of course, uh, inclusion and diversity, it's really uh, very high up always on, on, on the policy uh, uh, agendas of the university. So it's, it's always um, a good thing to also push it and diffuse uh, uh, these, uh, these values and, and uh, showcase even more if it's needed, if it's <laughs> not sufficient evidence, as, as you say, to, to the policymakers that are uh, implementing uh, you know, national uh, policies on uh, uh, the value for for driving uh, the value of diversity for uh, driving innovation. Thank you. Oh, any other comments from the audience here, friends? Okay, so maybe some if you want some final thoughts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. no? Okay. <laughs> still lunch time. Still. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's thank the speaker all of them and uh, and thank you very much for being here thank you thank you now there is a break and uh, later we are reprise so thank you very much thank you thank you